everyone. My name is Mihir Shep, and I'm a combat lead here at Santa Monica Studio. Uh, on uh, God of War, I worked on combat for uh, player character as well as a bunch of enemy stuff and just kind of all over the place. I'm joined by a couple of other devs, so I'll pass it to, uh, to Denny. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Denny Ye. I'm also combat lead at Sony Santa Monica. Uh, I worked on all of these Valkyries that we're about to see. Uh, probably won't see that much of my work because I assume the speedrun is just going to demolish them. Uh, but I was also in charge of a lot of the enemy cast and boss boss fights in the game. And we're also joined by Rob Meyer. Hey, I'm Rob Meyer. I'm a senior staff technical combat designer here. Uh, I actually joined in 2019, so after this game was made, but I'm a bit of a Valkyrie connoisseur, I guess you could say. So I'll have, like, <laughs> and a fan, so I'll have a lot of, of questions and comments of things I've learned since then to, to ask these guys about. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure so Rob's like... Rob knows more uh, about the like... <laughs> than me at this point. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking at uh, speedrun uh, done by Clown187. Uh, and here they're starting with that good old uh, Niflheim Valkyrie, Hilder. Uh, this is a, it's an interesting one to start with. I don't know about uh, both of you, but I, I probably wouldn't have started with this one. So it's an interesting strategy going for this one first. Maybe it's good to get the risky ones out of the way or something. Is he is he wearing of the, the mist reduction armor? I can't tell what armor he's wearing. Yeah. It looks like the yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, I'm sure thing, he doesn't need the reduction though. Gonna... The most here's my question for you, Danny. Uh this you designed this Valkyrie, I'm assuming knowing it was gonna be the one in the Niflheim mist with the time constraint, or was that kind of added after it? Yeah, well, yeah, we knew she was gonna be the one with the time constraint and also that every every time that you die you would have to do like the yeah the walk of shame running all the way back. So we purposely designed her to be a lot more simple. Uh he doesn't really have as many tricks as the other Valkyries. So that being said, the the little uh, ice shard, the little ice shard, uh, <laughs> ice storm. That move kind of takes a long time, and so it's a little troll that it's a long move that's in this. Yeah, you uh, know me, I'm a troll. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you see yeah. there, he actually just interrupted it with rage. It looks like. Yeah. So rather so, than having to deal with the whole length of the move. Yeah, she was because we when we planned all these Valkyries, we didn't know originally where they were going to be. We knew one was going to be in Niflheim. Uh, so her, she was originally concepted as the Ice Valkyrie, that's why she has that one Ice attack. Uh, but when we realized she is in the Niflheim Mist, we kind of like stripped her her moves a little bit so that basically she's not as tricky, she just has a little bit more straightforward stuff. That Ice move is pretty troll, is a little bit longer, but still, like, it gives you some time. To play yeah, and just uh, plowing through it of Kratos, you know, you can see, uh, definitely knows how to deal some damage here using the delay attacks on the blades, which are, you know, uh, you'll see this in a lot of videos, so one of the highest kind of uh, DPS that you can do with Kratos, so it's cool seeing all of that, and then using Runix to interrupt uh, Valkyrie. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful with, with that. You can't just uh, use them back to back to back. Uh, they might sneak in a few attacks if you do that, um, but I think made short work out of all of this. Smelly's down. <laughs> Next is Bernie. I'm assuming Bernie is Gondol. All right, let's yeah. try to guess what these are. Again. Bernie is Gondol. Speedy must be Ulrun, the, yeah. the dashy one. I mean, yeah. I know, but I'm curious to hear what your guesses Jump, are. Jumpy is Gon. No, wait, Jumpy is uh, what's her name? I don't even remember. The one yeah, that I, I don't know. The, I don't know the real name. I know the it's the Valhalla. The Valhalla yeah. lady. Yeah. Yeah, it's Rhoda. Rhoda. Rhoda, yeah. yeah, and then we I don't know what some classic special strike yeah. spam to get through the level faster here. You'll see this in a lot of like oh, yeah. videos. Just, just I'm curious move. about this. Did you guys know about the agile strike, uh, of, like aim yeah. cancel spam? Yeah, yeah. I almost took it out, um, and then I was like, you know what? Like, it is just something mechanical and something fun that you can do. Um, so within the studio, you know, QA was using it all the time, and like we knew about it. I, I, as long as it didn't break anything, so like the, the concern of making a character move too fast is that you could enter some zones before everything can load in, and that can cause some bugs. And so we had actually several other mechanisms that you could move through the level fast. Um, yeah, I remember that. I was talking to you about the uh, the sprint, the sprint speed enchantment. Yeah, well. yep, exactly. And we had to uh, tone it down because it just broke aspects of the game. But this one was just fast enough, like it was faster than sprinting, but it was it wasn't going to break anything. Um, and so, you know what, it's like, whatever, we can leave it in. For people that want to do it, they can do it, have some fun with it. It's like yeah. how ridiculous it looks. 
Yeah, for people who don't know, it's a evade fair hand skill where you evade forward attack, and then I believe you cancel it with aim uh, towards the end so you can do it again really fast back to back. I think there's another way to do it too that I, I've seen on YouTube where you like cancel it with axe recall or something, but but the aim way I believe is the main way. Yeah, so, uh, and then there's like a, in the skill tree, there's like an attribute bonus for like buffing that up. So it, it, you'll see people like kind of <laughs> abuse it, so to speak, uh, you know, speeding around levels and stuff like that. But it makes sense. It's the fastest way to get through here and for a speed run, you need that to matter. So yeah, Bernie is. Uh... <laughs> Bernie, I think, <laughs> is just the hardest for me besides the run. I really like this fight. Danny, you did a good job with this fight. This fight is really fun. Thank you. Now, Rob, when you say it's the hardest, you're talking about the New Game Plus version or the even the... the well, base? I played it on both, but but recently I, I replayed them all on New Game Plus and they got away, and that one was hard because of the, the Meteor stuff. All of the, yeah, because we added a bunch of new new mechanics for New Game Plus. Uh, I think, This is not New Game Plus, though. Yeah, this clear. is normal, yeah. but this yeah. is... Uh, well, it's going to be God of War, but it's uh, New Game, yeah. not... But yeah, I think on New Game Plus, she becomes one of the harder... So uh, right there, she does stomp. Stomp still. Yeah. yeah, she has like multiple stomps. Basically, I was trying to stop players from just rolling. I wanted them to do like a single, single dodge to like you know perfectly time their dodges so that they're not just mashing the dodge all the time. Seems like it worked pretty well on Rob. Yeah, yeah. Right. One thing you'll notice earlier when she went up into the air, uh, you know, you saw the player throw the axe at them. Um, actually, on lower uh, difficulties, you can just shoot an arrow. Uh, with with the square button, you can command a trace to shoot an arrow at them. That will work. But on harder difficulties, like when you got to work, uh, that doesn't work. You have to throw the axe, so it's a bit of a skill check. Yep. Do you have uh, any insight? Oh, yeah. Do you have any insight on why they're using these particular runics? They're like Wrath of Artemis blades light and the Hyperion grapple blades heavy. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Uh, so the the. Uh, the I call it cross slash. I don't know. Wrath of Artemis, I guess, is the, is the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that one has a really low cooldown. Uh, so it's quite uh, useful because of the low cooldown. And then the Hyperion Grapple, I think, is based on the cooldown. It's one of the highest single target DPS um, that you can do. You do need to aim it so you don't get it for free. It's the one where he throws both blades and zooms towards the target. Uh, but really, really strong, uh, especially in the Valkyrie fights. Um, the ones on the act, uh, I think we got the. Uh, one of them I know is the Talon, the... the yeah, Fiazzi's Talon, and then Hell's Touch, yeah. I'm pretty sure, is the light one. So it's Hell's Touch thing. is the first runic you get in the game, and it's actually really funny because, you know, people think it's like, you know, it's really fast and it's really weak, and it kind of, in the beginning, it's really more of an interrupt, but it, eventually later, it kind of becomes one of the highest, like, DPS runics in the game because of how quick the cooldown is. Um, so, it, if you know, if you're on it and you're using it a lot, it's super fast to come out, so it's very safe, it can interrupt enemies, um, it's it's just overall just a really good option. The Talon one is interesting. I, I'm I'm actually curious about this because I typically don't see a lot of players use that runic uh, in the Valkyrie fights. Um, it's generally really good when you're fighting multiple enemies because it'll apply frost and then it'll slow them down and then it'll lift them into the air so you can you know combo them. But obviously you can't launch the uh, Valkyries to the air, so definitely an interesting choice there. Probably should have said this earlier, but the actual format of this speed run <laughs> appears to be what is called Valkyrie percent, which I. By the looks of it, is play, like setting up the game in such a way, and then starting from the first Valkyrie through the last, completing them all as fast as you can in a sequence, um, yeah. legitimately from that point. So not a speedrun of the whole game, obviously, uh, just a speedrun of, of all the Valkyries in sequence. Here is what I. This is what I like. The speed, the store speedrun. <laughs> you gotta upgrade the blaze right there. Does that save time? I guess it must save time if we're doing it. Okay, so Gondol gives you a blades upgrade. Uh, yes. I guess so? I don't remember. But that, that Blaze upgrade only gave you some runic, so I'm not sure. I guess that makes Oh, it, uh, it unlocks some skill tree nodes, or does it? I, 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 don't, I don't think the, the last upgrade unlocks skill tree nodes. It gives, what, like stat boosts me here? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it actually uh, unlocks... I, I... I'm trying to remember it now. I think like up to level four on the weapons, the unlock skill tree nodes. But um, but yeah, like as Rob mentioned, I mean, normally you know on on some of these, uh, at least that I've seen, you know, they roll through the whole game. But this game's pretty long. Don't really want to be sitting here, so it's nice <laughs> the whole time. But it is cool to see this like specific run through the Valkyries. Um, and what you'll you'll see on uh, you know other kind of speedrun videos that come after this, especially through New Game Plus, is there's a lot more like optimized ways of dealing damage. But one thing that we that's really cool about this. Uh, 
speed run is kind of this is this is a little bit early on this is a uh, i can't remember the exact date but it's not too long after the game came out um and so it's kind of like i don't know a little bit more honest i would say like it's 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 cool to see the techniques being used and the different strategies uh, eventually you know with a lot of games you kind of figure out like all right this is clearly the most optimal thing to do and in the new game plus version we added um the zeus armor which allows you to really do like way more damage uh, you take more damage as well, but it kind of like changed the runs. But this is like a, I would call it like an OG run. This is like a, yeah, it's cool. It's cool seeing um, what they were thinking of at the time. And and even early oh, here. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Oh, switch of the talisman. There it is. Yeah. What did he, wait, what did he switch to? I mean, it's... He switched to Just Evade uh, Realm Shift, Cavasio. Oh. And look at this. Oh, look, right. look, oh, look, look, look at it. Oh, it is, it is. <laughs> No, so it was level five on the blaze. Yeah, yeah, I'm wrong. And and that was the uh, the delay stance R two like so multi stab. Okay, right. So I yeah. guess so this that's this is the key. Yeah, that's it. You need that's why th this is why the Niflheim Valkyrie is done first because you got to get the uh, yeah. Once you get the upgrade, now now you can do the delay R two. Now it's a different game. There right it is. There, right? Yeah, there it is. Stabbing stabs. Yep. And there's the realm shift from the 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 um, talisman switch so before yeah, they had the same. talisman that reset all the runic cooldowns and now they have the one that if you have uh, just barely just in time evade you get the little realm shift slow down yeah right yeah. there it's not a little easter egg but if you can tell that the shield has the uh has a kind of like spartan symbol on it that represents that this player has played through the game on gimme god of war before so uh you know they can they can show off a little bit yeah, I guess the realm shift isn't worth it until you get this blade's delay, because he was just spamming uh, runics before that, huh? Yeah, it might be. I I'm, I I feel like I would still pick the realm shift uh, personally when I run through this. I just feel like it's you know if you're on your game, it's just it's hard to compete. It's for stuff like this, right? Like being able to punish um, some of those kind of Valkyrie moves. One thing this player isn't doing that's interesting is that when you do avoid uh, uh, the stomps. And realm shift occurs. You'll see people pick the uh, use the axe and use the executioner's cleave because it will actually interrupt the Valkyrie and knock them out of that. Uh, but here, the player's choosing to you know use the delay. Does that blades multi stab? Yes. Does the blades multi stab not do that? The last hit of it? Does it? I don't know. Uh, I know. I, don't, I know. I it breaks through the block, which we might see later. Yeah, yeah. It breaks through block, but it doesn't interrupt yeah. here. I think the executioner's okay. cleave does. Yeah, so a little Easter egg here. The the Valkyrie actually take fifteen percent more damage from Blades because uh, Blades R one, which I was tuning for, actually does less DPS than the Axe. Little did I know the Blades delay combo was ridiculously broken. So now the Blades do more damage just by default, and they're boosted by fifteen percent. The Valkyrie. So yeah, no, it's why. funny. We, we designed the del yeah the, the delays were designed kind of to fill the. Uh, the gap in the weapon so the axe delays are about increasing the area of effect and the uh, blades delay is more about single target dps so it's normally you know you think of the blades as hitting all the enemies large area of effect and the axe being single target but the delay is kind of like a switch on them so trick denny with that one didn't you got <laughs> no, or it wasn't accounting for that i did all this nonsense to to prevent like runic runic cooldown spam from destroying the valkyries little did i know the simple delay stance is the one. It's time for jumpies, right, so though. Jumpies next. So jumpy so likes to do, do jumpy like is? jumpy is this the swoops, this is, right? Yeah, this is the triple swoops and the triple stunt, which on is this game uh, plus Rosa, Rosa, I think. a lot more mix up. This is uh, what's her name? Rosa, Rosa, right? I think, yeah. yeah. Can you interrupt? Uh, the swoops with a runic or anything? You can't interrupt a swoop. Yeah, I feel like for a speedrunner, it might be worth interrupting rather than having to sit through the, the triple swoops, but we'll see. I mean, on on Speedy, they destroyed maybe half half Speedy's health before Speedy was able to do anything. So let's see if yeah. Jumpy's able to fare better here. Which Valkyries have the most health besides Sigra? Uh, Tanky has the most health, as <laughs> seen by Tanky. I love the these names. names. These names are great. We should have just called uh, these names. And then I'd say Bernie is probably the next. 
highest. I mean, I guess technically Bernie has more health than Tanky, just because Bernie is a higher power level than than Tanky, because uh, Bernie and Smelly were designed for Muspelheim and Niflheim, which are the end game encounters. The other ones are kind of like meant to be done in whatever order. But uh, yeah, so it'd be like the tier list of tankiness is Queen Ass Hat, followed by Bernie, followed by Tanky. Bad. These are Very these are the it. true Norse names. This is in the lore. If you look up the poetic Edda, these are the names that you'll find. All right, let's see what you got. I love the design of the socket, like the helmet, the antlers. It's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Shout out Each to of... the SMSR team. Yeah, all of the Valkyries have different helmets, different designs on the wings. Okay, nice so delay. Jumpy has done one jump so far. Oh, here's the second jump. Yes, you know it right there. Yeah, no, oh, I right. missed the realm shift on that one. Yep. There's the triple sweep. There's the triple Yeah. I think yeah, they already used other runic. Wait it out. Yeah. Not to interrupt. Didn't use could have interrupted with rage as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. They used rage on Smelly, but I don't think I've I've seen them use it much since. Ah, oh, the wing stab. Classic wing stab. Ah uh, yes, the A frame wing stab. Quite possibly the most perfectly tuned attack I've ever made. <laughs> it's it's good. You gotta respect it. <laughs> the secret is you just you just walk right and it just misses. Most so of the time about, you can kind of feel the lore. <laughs> yeah. tell, tell us about the lore of the Valkyries. The lore of the Valkyries. Yeah, tell, what's what's their backstory? You know, what are they all about? Oh man, I'm probably not the best person to speak on this. <laughs> no, they're like corrupted, that. right? No, 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 you're going around. You're you're freeing. You're you know you're you're saving them from corruption, right? You're helping. That's the whole that's the whole setup. Is that they're they're thanking, which I think yeah. for players the first time they saw it, they were like, wait, what? <laughs> so o Odin corrupted them and put them in these. Yeah. Shells or something. I, actually, I I don't know either. Even though I were... no, it's really cool though. Like the way it's set up. Like I think this is something um, that I'm, I'm really happy about. This game is that um, you know, and shout out to the writing team and, and everyone that uh, you know helped to make this happen. But like when you do a lot of these things in the game, it isn't just for the sake of doing it. Like there's always a backstory. There's something tying it together, and it makes it feel more purposeful. So it is cool seeing that. Because I remember even for myself, like eventually after the game came out and I, I did my Give Me God of War run through. And you get to, you know, which this player will do as well, but you get to the final Valkyrie and it's, there's like a really cool payoff uh, in there. And it's funny, people think that, you know, in the development of games, we know all of this stuff. To be honest, like we're focused on very different things. So, you know, you don't really see it come together until the, the very end um, or even sometimes even past release uh, because, we're you know, each one of us is so focused on an area that seeing it all kind of come together was was awesome. It was really, really cool. Time for Kate, Caddy, Katie or Caddy. Actually, I have no idea who this one would be. I guess by process of elimination, it would be Gerdrifle. I would have named it Pearl. No, no, no. Blindy sure is Gerdrifle Gerdrifle. Blindy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's Caddy? I think this one is Last Gunner. One. Gunner. Gunner. Oh, okay. Actually, I guess Gunner has the least identity, so <laughs> just give him a random name. They have the best uh, voice and death dialogue, though. What did she say? Was she the one yeah. that screams? I think so, yeah. I think she's the one that screams <laughs> in all caps. <laughs> you didn't give her a good enough combat identity, so they had to, <laughs> they to had give to, her a good narrative identity. They had to make up for my failures. Great. I appreciate that. But yeah, that's something cool about them, too, is they all have different voices, even though they're all yelling like similar things. Like whenever they do a stomp, they yell Valkyrie, or they yell uh, Valhalla. It's actually all different voice actresses. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I was wondering this on my recent playthrough, which is do the things that they say when you kill them change depending on what order you kill them in? They each always say the same thing. Uh, I believe it does change. They, yeah, they just talk about different things. Yep. Yeah. So th cool. we actually, for each of the different Valkyries, it, we recorded multiple lines depending on when you kill them. Yeah. So if you want to experience the full... Yeah, so if you want to experience the full narrative of all the Valkyries, just kill them all in different order. That replayability. 
So Katie here is supposed to be the uh, technically the first Valkyrie we assume most players will fight because uh, she appears in the same location that you get the uh, the chisel, which lets you unlock the, the doors that lead to the Valkyrie. Yeah, it's almost like a tutorial Valkyrie fight in a way. Uh, yeah. Where it's just kind of setting the expectation of like this fight actually isn't hard. It's very. I think her move set is really small, right? She has like three moves, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. She has like, yeah. some different scythe slashes, and then yeah, the basic. But yeah, all of her moves are dodgeable. That you can block them all, so there's no like special mix. Usually, the hardest thing about her is that you're usually under leveled when you first fight her. Uh, but yeah, this this get gives you like the first taste of what it's like to fight a Valkyrie. Evading it, under the wing combos with the realm shift is pretty pretty yeah, slick, pretty so cool. I'm too afraid to do that. Oh, wait, what do you do? You yeah, just block it? I just block the full wing combo, yeah. Uh, yeah, one thing that's kind of funny in this fight is that she has a that swipe down attack that's uh that's block break, the yellow flash. This fight and, you know, well, yeah. we're trying to we're trying to teach players, you know, to parry it, but you'll notice that when players actually take this talisman with the realm shift. The right option is always evade at the last second. Uh, that's one thing you'll see players do when they get more familiar with Valkyries is that they'll, they'll kind of stop doing the parries and start doing the just time evade with the realm shift. And that's kind of like a level of mastery, uh, you know, level of mastery jump here, which is cool. Please tell us, why were you in this physical form? Why fight us? I do not know. And there's all caps. Yeah. <laughs> Personality. <laughs> This goodbye screen too is great. One thing everyone always loved is like oh, when Kratos grabs the mask. It's like where does he place it? He he shoves all his loot into the the bag that's holding his wife's ashes. That's actually not not yeah. a joke. That's actually what he does. There it is. <laughs> right now. That's a little disturbing to be honest. <laughs> it is. Wait, hold on. I just realized Kara does not have a nickname. It's just Kara. Yeah, it's, just, it's just, there's no like summony or like some like what is it? It's like, like yeah. friendly. She's the one that summons a bunch of Draugr, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, this one has an exploit though. I wonder if this. I wonder if he uh, does the exploit. Oh yeah. With the. We tried it. I can't remember if we fixed it on New Game Plus or not. But like, this was something that bothered us. We wanted to fix it. We couldn't get around to it. But uh, it has to do with uh, triggering um, an R three uh, stun grab uh, on a Draugr, but it could switch to her, and it could it could. This was like a <laughs> this was like huge issue. <laughs> yeah, basically you stun a Draugr and you press R three to do like the execution stun grab on the Draugr, but due to a glitch, you can actually execute stun grab Kara instead. Yeah. Let's see if it's an honorable fight, though. We'll see. Is it glitchless or is it not glitchless? That's what that's yeah, that's so far it's been pretty glitchless. Doing it yeah, wrong. Using the wolves to yeah, lock yeah. down. Oh, there's the Draugr. Making their presence felt. Ignoring the Draugr. So on the tier list of tankiness, Kara is he's... Here you go. Yeah, already short work. Doesn't need the stun grab. Stun grab will be slower than what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty clean. Gotta say, oh, that was uh, saw that. You yeah, had a little glitch. Yeah, I saw the camera yeah. glitch when she goes invisible. <laughs> Chip with it. Beautiful. Yeah, the uh, the Valkyrie pop off for maybe a few frames sometimes when you do the R three grab. I think it's when the the camera clips into her. It calls out the uh, model. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that's kind of interesting is just ignoring the Draugr here, uh, super fast because uh, I'm giving you out a war of you damage enemies. Um, they drop, I think, beneath 80 health. Um, uh, they uh, they turn elite, and then they're much more, uh, basically much more scary. They come after you, they armor attacks and everything like that. And so this fight, I think, on Gimme God of War, you're kind of, most players are, are going to struggle managing the joggers that are summoned. And, you know, because you don't want to leave them at a little bit of health. They are going to come back and be really powerful. But this player is just so fast that uh didn't have to care. Just focus straight on the Valkyrie, ignore the Draugr, didn't get hit. Yeah, also normally she's supposed to summon multiple waves, and each wave, the lower health she gets, she starts summoning stronger Draugr, like the ones with the the powered legs that can dash at you, the ones with the shields and everything. But uh, Sensei just, just ignored the Draugr. It was not a problem. One of the, yeah, one of the, uh, again, effective kind of strategies is 
keeping some Draugr alive, right? Like so that delays when the next um. Yeah, if you keep two Draugr, yeah, if you keep yeah. two Draugr alive, she will not summon at all. <laughs> so if you can yeah, manage exactly. Draugr, yeah. But it's time for Tanky now. So Tanky, it was kind of a happy accident that uh, the arena for Tanky is actually much smaller than some of the other Valkyries. Oh. It worked out pretty well with uh, with her combat because she does a lot of like kind of area attacks where she just slams the the mace down, and it's kind of nice because it makes you worry a little bit more about your positioning compared to some of the other Valkyries, giving it a kind of a different feel. Yeah, this right one, now, like... murdering them. <laughs> There's the <laughs> you don't yeah. see much of it. I've been surprised. It's generally like pretty conservative rage usage. This is probably it's probably oh. because uh, rage probably they got gives it right there. Less uh oh, oh, ooh! They like did a a blade toss against the scythe drop, and it did not pan out. Maybe they thought they had axe out. I don't know. But yeah, for rage me here, I'm pretty sure Valkyries have a lot of resist rage, so I think it's probably a DPS loss versus just oh, this. not 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 so much for the damage, more entering and exit. Uh, oh, to, you mean for uh, the intro? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did it once this fight at the beginning. Yep. By the way, you see that confident walk back earlier? Just to get out of the range of the mace slam? That was that was pretty clutch. <laughs> didn't, didn't evade, wasn't scared, just confidently walked back. Gotta love it. That was a great little evade you right You saw that evade into the wall? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I like to make sure all my fights are perfectly polished. <laughs> One thing I should, probably should have pointed out too is the part of the reason for the, the the DPS on the delay R2 for the blades is that you leave um I think there's an upgrade for it or something where uh, you leave a, a little bomb on the enemy that explodes after a, a brief delay so that adds to the total damage so yeah really just uh, probably over tuned to be honest because that move it was funny for the longest time everyone kept saying that move was terrible and and like why would you ever do this like why would you ever delay Everyone complained about it internally. And so, you know, we're looking at the tuning. We're like, okay, well, let's give you a reason to use it. And then sure enough, everyone discovers that, like, it's the strongest move. That's how that always happens, by the way. It's always because there's, within the studio, everyone's like, oh, this move's terrible. And then uh, designers, you know, have egos. So they're like, well, I'll show them. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, uh, at the time, it's uh, the designer on, on Kratos uh, was was dealing with this and uh, it's cool though. I do, I, I prefer that those, you know, if you are gonna put in work into a move like that, should have some payoff. Maybe it's a little too abusive here, but um, but sometimes, you know, you'll play in certain mechanics and stuff like that, where you pull, you'll put in work, you'll do like a cool combo or you'll do some delay or whatever. It won't feel worth it. You'll be like, you know, why did I even try to do this? So it's a tricky balance, little uh, game design tidbit. Yeah, and it's, it's a cool wisdom. little like setup too, because like doing the realm shift and then giving yourself time to yeah. do the delay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, on my on my Gimme God of War New Game Plus run through, I use the delay combos a lot. I barely use them at all on my first run through, but I, I really like them. I I even like that the on the axe delay R one combo, like you can't evade out of it, so it's even more like high risk to to use it. But it's just so yeah. Fun. The challenge is like. With things like the delays is that it's hard to tell whether they're intentional or not, right? Um, so things like that where, you know, some players I know were kind of frustrated. They would try to do the delay combo and then they can be hit by accident and they're locked in the can evade. So this is all the combat design stuff that goes into making this moveset work, right? It's like trying to understand what players are trying to do and reward them. And Valkyrie's kind of tested that, um, you know, to the to the max, especially as we'll get to uh, Queen Asshat in a second. Uh, Gear Dude Cole is, is my favorite uh, besides Sigrun. I just Blinding. really like it. I like the in air blind, then you turn around, and then right here, and then you have to turn back, and she might already be swooping at you or throwing a shock room. Yeah, that actually happens on New Game Plus. So on New Game yeah. Plus, after she does that blind, she she goes into another attack a lot faster to force you to turn around much quicker. Yeah, one thing you'll see a uh, uh, player doing is that they don't actually do the quick turn to turn around, they just look at the ground, um, which yeah. Yeah, totally can do. It seems a lot better than what I was doing, which is the quick <laughs> turn. <laughs> but but the quick turn feels kind of baller when you get the timing just right. 
It yeah. is, but you're, the, the thing about the quick turn is that it's a branch, right? So there's certain windows where it can happen immediately and certain windows where it can't. But looking yes. down, you can always do. Yes, I, I got punished. I, I was messaging Gunny about this earlier, actually. I got punished on some quick turn shenanigans on my recent speed run Gimme God of War run through. Perfectly tuned, I'm hearing. Short work. All right, so we're at 30 minutes in the run, and the estimate for Queen Atha is 41 minutes. So it sounds like Big Run's gonna be a pretty meaty fight. Yeah, she yeah, we'll she see. is a uh, she's pretty long. I guess we'll see how long they take. Oh, oh you know what it is? You know what it is? They have to place the helmets down on all nine. <laughs> there you go. What's the speed run tactic for placing the helmet? That's a good question. I want to see the optimal line, like what, what, which part of the circle do you start on? <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. It's a traveling salesman problem, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, this is the fight that, you know, on YouTube and stuff, you'll, you'll see so many people try to uh, work on this fight and optimize it. And eventually it gets it gets insane, especially with New Game Plus, to how quickly people can run through it. Uh, but it was, a uh, for a long time, we were just watching the footage and just seeing little optimizations and little improvements as people learn things. Um, early on, you'd see people, like, really confident, like, this is the best way to do it. And then it would be, like, switching up the gear a little bit or, or a new choice. Um, yeah, shout out to all the, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that that really... Uh, just kind of explore this stuff. It, it, it really means a lot. It's really fun seeing uh, the systems of the game explored and pushed. And I know like every developer pretty much feels this way whenever a game comes out. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a joy to look at this stuff. Yeah, it was super fun watching everyone attempt all the Valkyries when the game first came out. And then when God of War PC came out after two, it yep. was a little yep. moment where some players started playing it. It felt like 2018 all over again, great. Yeah, Twitch was open a lot for me uh, with the PC release. That Draugr pit, so watching people die in the Draugr pit again and again brought back brought back uh, memories. Oh yeah, early game give me God of War. Watching people struggle on that. Love it. Maybe okay, travel a little bit. They're they're positioning themselves to be as close to the chair as possible. I got away from it. Got away for the text though. Mimir's got to stay in the line. There you go. Right, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Nice. That was very well executed. Now, I noticed they're not even doing the agile strike spam between the chairs. Maybe like the distance. Yeah, no time for that. Yeah. yeah. The distance has to be too precise. <laughs> Love that camera move. Just a Ooh, side, that, was, side that? camera. That was a quick move. Quick turn. I love how sudden it is. How Kratos just like puts the the helmet down in slow motion and then zoom right there. We'll get to so it in a second, but the spawn of this uh, Valkyrie is one of the coolest things in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, it's pretty great, especially when you're seeing it for the 30th time after you died 29 times. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's it sets the tone. It's like you no, know, I, you I know, really like it yeah, yeah. This is true, Denny. By the way, this is like Denny's personality. All just this spawn captures it. Oh yeah, this spawn used to do damage until me me here <laughs> asked me to move. I remember that. I was like, yeah, that's cool. Just start the fight with you know happier life thinking out. <laughs> all right, so all this little summons. Uses Rage Enter there to interrupt that instead yep. of an axe throw. Maybe because they had the blades out, or maybe just because some other reason. Yeah, you could interrupt it with the blades too. I guess maybe the. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Wingstab, Solera 2. Ooh, got hit the Wingstab out of it. Yeah, the Wingstab opener. Yeah. I yep. think it really so normally you would, you would double tap L1 to do the Shield Bash to open them up, yeah. but certain moves have the uh, property to open up enemy blocks, like the Layer 2, so you're seeing smart use of that. One thing about this fight as well is just the arena is is, is very different than the other um, arenas. And, yeah, like, there's a lot of little nooks fun. and crannies in here, yep. even though it's like right there. You could still tell uh, that she was doing, you know, evade her evade L green right, which is going to go to the wing right. stab. But there's a lot of times where you can kind of 
get stuck in ways that make it a little tricky. But it's a cool arena, I still think. Oh! Wow. Yep, there it is. That's the entire rest in there. So Rob, how long did it take you to kill Sigrun in your your New Game Plus playthrough? What was your speedrun record? My my New Game Plus run, it was like 4 minutes 50 seconds to be there. 4 minutes? Okay. It was, or maybe a little less, 4 and a half minutes. I had two pieces of Zeus armor on now. Ah, uh, okay. Um, you got, I was you got doing... a ways to go, Rob. You got a ways to go. Because <laughs> it was my first New Game Plus run, and you get the Zeus armor chest from beating her, right? So I didn't have it yet. So yeah, you only I have two pieces. pieces. I had the Zeus armor limbs on. Ooh, I did all clean. strength and cooldown. Yeah, that was. Ooh, the... I like that right there. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, but using the parry that creates some distance, but the delay R two with the blades actually will move you forward a lot, so you don't actually have to uh, evade forward. You can do the delay R two straight out of. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, took a hit. Oh no no, a this, is, this is some strats. This is some strats. It it makes her calm down a little bit whenever you get revived. <laughs> Isn't there like yeah? Oh, I don't know what kind of red stone that was. There's. There's one that applies like stun to nearby enemies or something. I forget. There's like that three was, different. Rest I think there. that was the rage rest stone. Okay. Because uh, the health didn't yeah. get resurrected. Yeah. But now it's really on. Now if he yeah. dies, there's so no. You'll more notice else. right there when the when the runic attack was used, the Valkyrie didn't take a reaction. Oh, no, don't, don't tell there. everyone my secrets, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you gotta be you gotta be a little bit careful. You're too overzealous with those runics. Yeah, the, the Valkyries have this little hidden meter where if you do too many runics on them in a row, they start ignoring your runic attacks. It'll still do damage, but it won't cause reaction. It's a pretty troll mechanic. And uh, the reason I added that was because we had four runic attacks in our game and then this cooldown stat. So I kind of was concerned that you could like do this broken build where you just kind of like cycle runics and just never... Plus the, the talisman that resets all their cooldowns. Yeah, plus that yep. talisman. Also, uh, okay, this, this is going right now, but, uh, but it's it's hard to kill. Once you get the health low, you're like, ah, I've gotten there. Almost <laughs> dead. And then, and the then you get the secret. Kind of a lie. The health bar is kind of a lie. Right? It is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, last, the last pixel on the health bar is actually worth a lot more. Also, the Valkyries... The lower health they get, the more defense they get as well. So yeah, that's, when that's you, what I was going to. Yeah, when to, you've yeah. done like half their health and damage, it's like you're only like seventy five percent. No, but I, like this is, in my opinion, a pretty happy accident because like yeah, there's 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 actually a bug leaf. This was not one hundred percent intentional, but one thing that it does create is this level of tension and disbelief at the end that is a little trolly, but it does it does also kind of make it feel more earned or once you get through it you're like thank god like <laughs> uh you know definitely a wave of relief you can see the clown's reaction right there put his face in his hands yeah i think he says uh, something relief. like it's yeah, like that was intense like i'm pretty sure uh, he says something like that no but that was really clean that was good uh you know definitely took a took a hit there probably could have been faster if uh you know didn't uh die from that attack and come back but overall really clean pretty smart Smart use of the delay attacks, smart use of the runics and rage and the interrupts. I noticed at the end when he activated rage, he was doing the rage rock throws. Is that like a really good rage DPS? Yeah, the maybe? rage. Yeah, the rage rock throw is uh, it's uh, it does a ton of damage, uh, but it also costs a lot of the rage bar. So what you really want to do is wait. You want to deplete your rage bar with other moves, and then when you just have like one hip of rage left, uh, you can do the rock throw. Uh, so that's kind of like the optimal way to use it. But there's definitely that sense of desperation, right? You saw the wolf summon and the rage rock throw. Just, just throw everything. Kitchen sink. Just let's end this fight. Um, and, I, and, and that's something you see in a lot of people. They, that desperate push to finish. Um, and I think that makes the fight pretty memorable. So good job, Denny. Yeah, thank you. Good job to you too, B. You too, Rob. <laughs> Great job. Great yeah, job, Rob. I, yeah. like, I, I wanted to say that I, I kind of deserve the most accolades for this. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Great job to Clown187 as well. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah, but this was really awesome to watch. Yeah, and uh, thanks to IGN for having us. Uh, this has been a blast.